वेलकम टू सर्किट वैली आई एम गौरव टुडे आई एम गोइंग टू शो यू अ रियली इंटरेस्टिंग स्पाई टेक्नोलॉजी इट कैन बी इवन कंसीडर अ सीआईए ग्रेड हैकिंग टेक्निक दिस इज द फर्स्ट टाइम एवर दिस हैज बीन पब्लिश्ड ऑन इंटरनेट फॉर द सेक ऑफ लर्निंग आई विल डू लाइव डेमोस्ट्रेशन ऑफ इथरनेट वायर टैपिंग वी विल डू वायर टैपिंग ऑन दिस इथरनेट केबल इट इज वेरी वेरी डिफरेंट देन व्हेन कंपेयर टू योर एनालॉग टेलीफोन वायर टैपिंग व्हिच यू समटाइम्स सो इन द मूवीज वी आर गोइंग टू डू डिजिटल वायर टैपिंग ऑफ दिस इथरनेट केबल व्हिच यू सी रनिंग बिटवीन टू कंप्यूटर्स रेस्बेरी पाई on the bottom see raspberry pi 5 because it has pci and this is raspberry pi 4 and as you can see they are connected to point to point ethernet cable cable is going directly to one computer to another computer as you see on the right side we are going to make a opening in the cable and we are going to literally eavesdrop the signals on this cable we have not cut the cable cable will remain connected as is and we are going to just remove the insulation and use very very simple hardware taps to get into the electrical signal and get contact to the copper which is connecting both of the raspberry pis over the ethernet this ethernet is normal ethernet cable nothing special about it which you use for internet and everything else once tapped into the cable we will try to find out what these computers are sending to one another wire tapping is a common hacking technique you may have heard the reports of some hacking organization tapping into undersea cable installing optical splitter and mirroring the whole communication happening over that optical channel and they copied every single thing we are going to do exactly similar thing in our lab but at small scale we are going to use basic tools to find out what is the communication between this between this computer and this computer as you can see there are two raspberry pi talking to one another over the single ethernet cable i have removed the insulation we are going to probe right here but the insulation is removed computer on the bottom side will send the packet to computer on the top this video is going to be really interesting for because there are many techniques involved you will learn about the oscilloscope the probes you will see that some tasks are better performed with the oscilloscope rather than being performed by a logic analyzer because you will see that sometime looking at the analog signal value is very very important and you cannot easily set the correct references and even the automatic reference finding will not find the appropriate reference for the every signal let's look at the oscilloscope oscilloscope we will be using is msos 804a it's 8 gigahertz 20 giga sample per second oscilloscope it's a behemoth of a enterprise class oscilloscope not every oscilloscope can handle and decode ethernet so it's going to be really helpful that we have uh, our hands on this really expensive oscilloscope this oscilloscope is really special to be able to achieve its full potential it needs really high tech probes i have few active probes with me one of them is 1158a this 1158a is active probe with 4 gigahertz bandwidth and with 4 gigabit of bandwidth it can easily handle ethernet ethernet is not that fast even gigabit ethernet is not that fast in terms of signal bandwidth i have also 1152a these are old 2.5 gigahertz probes both probes can easily handle ethernet even gigabit ethernet so looking back at the cable let me zoom in a bit you see this is a standard ethernet cable and the wires are color coded as standard ethernet and in the You see the colors are white blue white brown green and orange orange green blue brown so in the 100 megabit ethernet for the sake of demonstration i'll show you first 100 megabit ethernet so for 100 megabit ethernet only the orange pair and the green pair matters rest of the two pairs are not used and we are going to i have already removed the insulation of green and orange pair and this green wires are which is coming from raspberry pi 5 they are driven from here and they are going into raspberry pi 4 okay and the brown pair or sorry the the orange pair they are driven by raspberry pi and they are going back into the raspberry pi 5 so we'll send something from raspberry pi 5 first we will probe these green wires which are driven from raspberry pi 5 and we will see if we can decode these the, the we will see if we can decode these packets on the on the oscilloscope let's look at the probes These are my two probes. This thinner one is 1158A. This is 1152A. This is 4 gigahertz probe, and this is 2.5 gigahertz probe. Of course, these both of these probes they cost quite a bit, so I bought them used. And I do not have all the accessories for the probes, but I'll get some help from these really thin wires. You see, they are looped around the both of the pairs, and by that we can hook our probes, for which we do not have all the mounting accessories, because I bought them used. so we will try to use this silver wire this silver wire came with my mdo 3000 and this really th fine silver wire used to loop around small places and access to the place where you do not get normally access so i have made these kind of hooks you can see i have looped around the wire and i will just take the probe there i'll show you how i connected it's really really finicky so i'll not touch it 
Now we'll go to my computer and I'll show you right now. You're looking at the terminal of my Raspberry Pi 5. We're going to send packets over the Ethernet. I have managed to put together a program by taking reference from a program published on GitHub by someone else. This program does not originally come from me. I just modified it, inserted a few features so that it sends raw UDP frame rather than just a empty broken IP frame or empty broken Ethernet frame. We're going to use this program to send small raw UDP frames. We'll try to find out how hard it is to find this content of this small packet using a wiretapping. Let's take a look at the program itself. This is the source code. And this program prepares a small UDP frame with the destination MAC as shown. It also sets the destination IP as shown. Destination IP 192.168.10.1. And this package content is hexadecimal 45 AD BE EF 1245 AD BE EF 12. We will try to find out if we see the same exact packet on the oscilloscope. This program can easily be compiled by GCC. At the end of the file you can see the same packet has been transmitted twice. I wanted to send two packets one after another as soon as possible. So just to see that uh, we will be able to detect the full bus load as well if we want to detect. I have made a small script. It's a wrapper to the program and it will call this program at the interval of 100 milliseconds as simple as that and my program my simple program sends UDP frame and these small UDP frames will go to the destination MAC as set 11223344455 and destination IP with my custom data right now you are looking at the web view of my MSOS 804A and right now you can see we are sampling at 20 giga sample per second with 200 kilo points and we are looking at the Ethernet frame right now Ethernet is configured for 100 megabit and we will soon zoom in and we will look at the individual bits right now we are set to 20 giga sample per second maybe I will check if it is in automotive mode or it's in it's in auto mode so we will leave it right there let's zoom in a bit so that we can see a little bit better so this is how your ethernet frame looks I will I'll do a single capture and this is how your ethernet frame looks it's typical of a ethernet frame if you want we can measure this fast time it's not that much of a big issue so how much is your fastest time it should be around 125 megahertz or something like that yeah so this is what I was expecting for 100 megabit ethernet so this is as expected and uh, let's remove the markers and we will try to set up a measurement there so let's go out 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 let's do one more single capture maybe we need to capture at least few milliseconds because I would love to see both of the packets now we are at 100 millisecond full view yeah, this much should do. We'll do a single capture. So it captured on 2 giga sample per second, 100 megabit. Uh, maybe one more. Okay, now we are good. 5 giga sample per second, 10 mega points. So let's do a protocol decode. We'll go to setup and protocol decode and let's see if it works. We have to select the source first, channel number 1, and we will try to turn on the decode. Okay, it does not decode. You see, the overall invalid, invalid, invalid. We can also verify if we have good enough resolution. We'll go to zoom. And maybe I need a little bit lesser zoom than this. Uh, signal looks okay. It should be decodable. Okay, now we comes to the hard part that you have set it up. You can do auto setup or you can do manual setup. I prefer to do manual setup. And now let's look at it this thing. So trigger level. This upper is set to mi minus 200 millivolt and lower is set to 0 volt. It's supposed to be around 200 millivolt. That was wrong. Okay. And protocol decode threshold. I will maybe leave it run now. Let's turn it off. Turn it on again. Let's see if it detects this time. It still did not detect it. 
that's the one more manual setup I do not like it actually general threshold I'll take this so now we'll do one more time single capture trigger setup H. so you see even when we turn on this thing it does not really detect anything it tells you that it cannot recover clock sometimes it sometimes tells you something else we'll do a manual setup and these things you check these levels we have already corrected them and now this level we need to set it to threshold 135 millivolts and we'll set it to maybe 30 or something like that millivolts peak to peak of hysteresis and now let's see if we can detect it you see everything is green we are detecting these ethernet symbols so we are detecting these ethernet symbols these are idle symbols and they are all over the place okay and now we can set up the trigger sometimes you see some broken packet as well because this maybe the whole thing didn't get captured it could not able to understand but it doesn't matter and I will set up a trigger and I'll go to the protocol trigger it's already set to ethernet the hysteresis is also set right any ethernet packet you can select hundreds of different type of thing so I'll select any ethernet packet Okay, and I'll do a single capture. Now, okay, it did find something, some kind of UDP, IPv4 UDP packet. I will take a look at the content, if this is our packet. This is definitely not our packet, it's some kind of other UDP packet. You see the content is not as we expected it to be, definitely not our packet. I try to capture one more time with single trigger let's see if it sends something I see there is some activity going on but I cannot I do not receive anything so let's try to send packet one more time and I'll see if it detects they did detect it some packet some time ago but right now it's not able to capture any packet from my side I should be sending something there and I think now I can send the packets. So I'll call up my program, fastethernet.sh, and I am set to single trigger. And you see, we have captured something. And it's a UDP frame twice. And you see, this port is 3423. 3423. Maybe I'll show you in my program. The port is exactly 3423. And let's look at the content of the packet. Maybe I'll remove the zoom because it's not needed. Oh, it lost the capture. It will decode soon, yeah. So there are two packets. I believe they are exactly identical to one another because we sent the same packets. So you see on the right side, dash nation back 1122334455566, exactly what we set. And look at the content itself. So payload is 45AD beef, 1245AD beef and stuff like that so frame checksum is good and appears to be that header checksum is computed bad and that's why the packet is marked red so this way you can easily decode or find out the packets and let's try to do pings we have successfully decoded the packet and we have also successfully uh, find out the content of the packet whatever was going on on the bus we were able to decode it I'll do ping from the one side and we'll see how the ping packets look like So we are pinging and let's do one more single capture and let's see how does it look maybe it does capture it does capture something yeah so ICMP eco request and it sends the eco request from destination Mac source Mac and uh, this is how this is how so easy as that you can happily decode the packet content very easily so we are able to successfully eavesdrop a packet from the Ethernet cable I think this video is uh, very very long and uh, there is a mo lot more details pending if you prefer I can make a detailed video where we can do logging over the over the period of time but before I we go I'll still show you the packet how does the packet looks on on uh, Wireshark and uh, of course people will be point out that Wireshark you can easily use Wireshark for these kind of debugging but for some stuff Wireshark will not be able to help if something is on the hardware and stuff like that there are many methods to do it this is just one way of doing it 
for the sake of your entertainment and for the sake of using oscilloscope i showed you a demonstration that there are many techniques to to solve this problem wireshark is one of them so let's open up the wireshark and i'll show you how does this packet look on wireshark itself raspberry pi packets sent to my destination mac and this this packet is exactly same you see data is that same payload 4580 beef 12458 beef and stuff like that so same packet is being decoded by our oscilloscope so we can happily declare that uh, we got a victory and uh, we were able to decode the packets using oscilloscope and everything is as as suggested if you want detailed video more detailed video on the same topic i can make more detailed video about this this is part of a video series where i am decoding different protocols and next i'll be try to decode usb and i'll be publishing video about the pci as well because the pci decodation is has never been published on internet so i'll try to do some pci videos and we will go from there so thank you for watching and uh, you can come back later if you're interested in pci and usb and more ethernet you can make a comment i'll do more ethernet videos